All right, in this video, I'm going to work through four examples. Uh, the first one's going to be nice. It's going to work out nicely. Uh, so let's work through that. Um, so remember what we're doing here is completing the square. So just as a, a practice, just something to do the first step every time is to get that constant over on the other side. That's just what I do each time. You could do it a little differently. In fact, I'll, I'll point out what you could do differently in just a second. Um, so what do we do? What we're trying to do is get this guy, after I fill this blank in, I don't know what this should be yet, uh, but I'm going to fill this blank in so that when I um, multiply these two factors together, I, you know, I get x squared plus 4x plus this number. Now the thing about these two factors is that they are identical, okay? So we're gonna have x and x there, um, and we're gonna, like, these two numbers are gonna add to a positive 4x, so we are definitely going to add here. Um, and these, these factors are gonna be exactly the same so that we can write this as that times itself and write it as squared and square the root to both sides, you know, and this is the whole idea, this is why we're doing all of this. Whatever number winds up being over here, we're going to take the square root of it. Um, so what does this number have to be? If this number is going to be the exact, this number is going to be the exact same as this number, right? We fill in this blank, and it's exactly the same as this blank. And from our experience with factoring, we know that they have to add up to 4. Then we just kind of defined half of this number, right? This number would have to be half of this number. If they're going to be exactly the same and add up to this number, they have to be half of it, half. Half is very important here. I keep saying half on purpose. So we always take this guy, and if we were to write this over to the side, we take that number, divide it by 2, and that's the guy that goes here and here. Right? A 2 and a 2. Okay. Uh, let me erase those arrows because they're going to kind of be in the way. But there's a 2 there and a 2. All right. So we're, we're, there's so much to do still, but the whole motivation here is that we now can write it as x plus 2 squared, take the square root of it, and that makes solving it uh, pretty easy. So here's what happens. Like uh, So far, everything I've written in white is, uh, well, up to here, is no different than what was up here. I just moved the 5 to the other side, and, and that's it. But when I multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2, I get x squared plus 4x plus 4. When I multiply 2 times 2, I get 4. Right, so um, when I add 4 to this side, that's something new. That's something that was not in the original equation. So I've added 4 to the left side. So I have to add 4 to the right side. Okay, so on the right side, I have 5 plus 4, that's 9. Okay, and I, a, a minute ago, I already wrote the, the next step we're going to do is take the square root. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. That's why it's called completing the square, so we can take the square root. So we take the square root of both sides. The square root of something squared is just itself. Remember when we take the square root of a, a number, when we're solving an equation, we want to include plus or minus the square root, plus or minus 3. And then we subtract 2 from both sides. Negative 2 plus or minus 3. What's that mean? It means negative 2 plus 3 and negative 2 minus 3. Those are my two solutions. So if I add 3, I get 1. And if I subtract 3, I get negative 5. All right, next one. This one's going to come out pretty nice. Um, it's going to come out pretty nice. Uh, but it's not going to have a nice square root. OK, it's going to be just like the square root of some number. Uh, OK, so here's how that looks. Like. We get rid of this constant. Uh, we add 3 to both sides. Oh, I said I would show you how you could think of this differently. Um, just real quick over here, then I'll erase it. But we can do x squared plus 4x minus, <coughs> excuse me, minus 5 equals 0. Like now I know that this is supposed to be 4. You know, kind of thinking through that whole process, I know that this number, instead of being negative 5, should be 4. So to get this from negative 5 to 4, I would have to add 9 to it. Right, negative 5 plus 9 is 4, so I would add 9 to both sides, and it comes out, of course, the same. That's the 
that was the one other way that I was thinking you could think of it differently. With that done, we'll go, go back here. So we got x squared plus 6x plus something equals 3. Okay, this one comes out nice because, okay, now I'm going to assume at this point that we can just say we know that these are going to be half of 6 always. Like the, this guy in here in, in this identical factor is going to be half of this always, always. We're always going to take that number that's multiplied by x, just divide it by 2, that's 3, that's the number that goes in both of these factors. That's what we have in this squared factor, a 3. Okay. When we multiply these together, we get plus 9 as our constant. 3 times 3 is 9. We have to add 9 to both sides. So on this side we have 12. So when we have x plus 3 squared equals 12, we take the square root of both sides. And so this is where it's, you know, the, the root of, of the square root of 12 is not so nice. The, the square root of 9 is 3, that's nice. Square root of 12 is not some nice number. Okay, but we'll deal with that. It'll be no big deal. We have uh, x plus 3, the square root of x plus 3 squared is x plus 3, equals plus or minus the square root of 12. And we'll notice that the square root of 12, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So that's 2 root 3. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus 2 root 3. And then we just subtract 3 from both sides. x equals negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 3. And in this case, we won't really write two different answers because we, we did that here because we could combine these together. These, we can't combine these together. We can't add 2 root 3 to negative 3. The only way we could really do that is to um, write this as a decimal, but then it'll be approximation. Uh, or we can try and write this as something times the square root of 3, but then that'll be some weird decimal as well. So they just kind of sit here like this. And we know that if we wanted to get an approximation, we would take negative 3, we would add whatever 2 times the square root of 3 is, you know, as a decimal, maybe to four decimal places or something like that. Then we take negative 3 and subtract whatever this decimal is, and those would be our two approximate answers. But for now, we'll just leave them exactly uh, correct, exactly the right answers. All right, example number 3. This one uh, is going to come out um, to be pretty not nice, okay? but. It's going to be a little easier this than this one. Notice the difference between these two is that this has a 1 right here, and this one does not. In fact, all the ones we've done so far have had a 1 in front, a 1 in front, and this one does not. Its leading coefficient is a 3, where all the other leading coefficients were a 1. OK, so it's going to be pretty not nice, but at least we have a 1 here. So we can get right to work, and we can add one to both sides. And remember how I said I was going to assume that we all know now that we always take the, the number that's multiplied by x, and we go ahead and divide it by 2. Okay. So we have this 5. We're going to divide it by 2. Okay. And that is going to be the number that goes into our identical factors. All right, And we're really taking negative 5. So it's negative 5 divided by 2. It doesn't get much nicer than that. We don't really want to write it as a, I guess you could write it as a decimal. I prefer not to. Uh, but we get a negative 5 halves when we divide negative 5 by 2. So we get minus 5 halves, minus 5 halves. Try it yourself. We got negative 5 halves x, negative 5 halves x adds up to negative 5x. OK. Now when we multiply negative 5 halves times negative 5 halves, we're looking for the constant here, we get 25 fourths. 25 fourths. Um, so we have to add 25 fourths to this side. And we get a common denominator here. 4 fourths plus 25 fourths is 29 fourths. OK, so now we have x minus 5 halves squared, right? multiplied by itself, equals 29 fourths. We take the square root. And the square root of x minus 5 halves squared is x minus 5 halves. And that's going to equal plus or minus the square root of 29 fourths. Okay. One thing about the square root of 29 fourths, um, I can make it plus or minus the square root of 29 over the square root of 4. That is plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. So that's a little bit nicer. 
can't simplify the square root of 29. 29 is a prime number, so um, nothing we can do about that. So we have x minus 5 halves equals uh, plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. And then we add 5 halves to both sides. And we get 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. And we can write this as 5 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. Let me show you why. Because remember, this means plus 29, the square root of 29 over 2 and minus the square root of 29 over 2. Either way I go, if I take 5 halves plus the square root of 29 over 2, they have a common denominator. So I would wind up with, with just whatever 5 plus the square root of 29 is over 2, over their common denominator. Okay, so that's 5 plus the square root of 29 over 2. Or if I take it to be 5 minus the square root of 29 over 5 halves minus the square root of 29 over 2, they have a common denominator. I would take 5 minus the square root of 29 over 2. So that encompasses both of those possibilities. They do have a common denominator. We can go ahead and add them together or subtract them. All right. Um, where is that? So I'm looking for an eraser. OK. Uh, this one is going to be like the not nicest one, like the least nice one. OK, here's why. OK, let, let's go down to this step, what we want to get. We want to get x and x, and uh, it's going to be a plus something and a plus something. But see how we want an x and an x, a 1x and a 1x. Notice, if I were to multiply two factors like this together, I would not wind up with a 3 in front of the x squared. I would wind up with an x squared, just 1x squared. So anytime the leading coefficient is anything other than 1, now we have to make it 1. How do we make it 1? We have to divide both sides by 3. And this is probably going to move this step down a bit. So to divide everything by 3, that's great for the, the x squared term. That's always going to be nice for that leading term. But now we have 7 thirds x minus 4 thirds. And on this side, it's nice. 0 divided by 3 is just 0. But see how we wind up with these fractions? Ah. Eh. Well, you know, sometimes fractions happen. It's just what you're going to have to deal with. Um, but we proceed the same. Um, we always take this guy here, 7, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, 7 thirds. We divide it by 2, you know, di but dividing by 2, uh, dividing a fraction by 2 is kind of weird. So instead of dividing by 2, which is 2 over 1, we'll multiply by the reciprocal of 2 over 1, that's 1 half. So let me undo all that. Multiply by 1 half. That makes it easier, OK? Um, and at the same time, we'll add 4 thirds to both sides. So we get x squared plus 7 thirds x uh, equals 4 thirds. All right? And, uh, and what do we do here? What, what, you know, what was the whole purpose of this? That, remember, whenever we divide the, the term that's multiplied by x, whenever we divide that by 2, that's the guy that goes in these identical factors. So we can move this back up. All right. Um, so I always like to write these identical factors because then it makes it easy for me to see what the constant's going to be when I multiply this by that guy there. I'm going to get 49 over 36. 49 over 36. Which is a new number. I have introduced it to the equation. It wasn't there to start with. So we add 49 over 36 to both sides. All right, so ooh, that's, that's quite, a, quite a number that we're adding to both sides. Um, so what does that give over here? So we've we got to get a common denominator. Uh, that's going to be 3 times 12 to get 36 as our common denominator. Here, let's use a red here. 36 here. So we're going to multiply this by 12. 4 times 12 is 48. That's a terrible color. I don't know why I picked that. 48 over 36 with our common denominator. Now we add these together, and we have uh, what a 97 over 36. All right, so yeah, kind of a gross number, but hey, that's the way it goes. Uh, so now we have x plus 7 sixths squared you know, times itself, and now that equals 97 over 36. We take the square root of both sides. 
and we get x plus 7 sixths equals, I'm going to just go ahead and write plus or minus the square root of 97 over the square root of 36, which is 6. Notice, if you think about it, think about it for a second. Um, a lot of times when we to get this number, it's going to be this, a square, right? It's going to be this number times itself. So it's going to be a square. Even if it's a fraction, this denominator is going to be a square. Uh, as long as this isn't some weird fraction, um, we can get a common denominator there that's going to be a square number so that we can take the square root of it at some point. That happens a lot. Okay, anyway, let's subtract 7 sixths from both sides. x equals negative 7 sixths plus or minus the square root of 97 over 6 equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 97 over 6, just like we saw in this previous example. Okay, so this answer doesn't look a whole lot worse than this. It, it did involve fractions, you know, that's why it's the least nice one. We had to divide by 3 in the very beginning, uh, so that made it ver not very nice. But remember, that's something we need to do. If, if we're going to use completing the square, which we are, we need to divide by 3 at the first step. And that's the, that's the beginning of uh, making, and we're going to make, the, uh, the uh, quadratic formula. Okay, It's going to be a question on the test. Uh, first the quiz, and then the test. So make sure you're prepared for that. We're going to make the quadratic formula. Okay, later on I will show you how to do that. Uh, you could uh, memorize it, but understanding the process of completing the square is going to make it so much easier to create the quadratic formula. Okay, and uh, I'll just remind you: the quadratic the quadratic formula uh, looks like this: x equals uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, and uh, just, to, just to show you how it's going to begin, we're going to take any quadratic equation. That would be anything that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It's always set up like this. Like We always set up our quadratic equations this way, like set up equal to zero, right? Even when we do completing the square, like the first thing we do is like move this guy over here. Or actually the first thing we're gonna do is divide by what this guy, whatever this is in front of here, divide by a. Okay, and then we get x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a equals zero divided by a is just gonna be zero, right? And we're just gonna run a do the exact same steps for the general quadratic equation as we would do for, say, this quadratic equation. Like we did all of the same steps. If we did all these same steps for any quadratic equation with something in front of x squared, something in front of x, a constant equal to zero, if we did those exact same steps in that exact same order, we would get the solution, right? Divide by this number, move this number to the other side, divide this number by two, add the square of, uh, of that number that's divided by two, take the square root of both sides, uh, and then subtract this from both sides. Like it's exactly the same uh, every time, the exact same steps. That's what the quadratic formula is. It just does those steps for you, um, and you just plug A, B, and C in there, right? So uh, we'll get to that later, but thanks for watching.